Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Unconventional Attorney Podcast. I'm your host, Christopher Small, and I am the Unconventional Attorney. Today, I'm excited to uh, bring you another Attorney X episode. Uh, If you are unfamiliar with this, I am basically interviewing anonymously law firm owners from around the globe to find out what's working for them, the kind of revenue that they're really making, the kind of challenges that they're really facing, and uncovering all the things that they are afraid to expose out there in the real world under their own names. Now, the only way that I can continue to have these interviews is for law firm owners just like you to come on the show. Um, We all get to learn from the information and the experiences we share, and this is my call to action for you to come and join me as an Attorney X guest. It's very simple, it's 20 minutes, and if you come on, I give you a free t-shirt that you can't get anywhere else. So if you walk around and you see people wearing Attorney X t-shirts, it's because they have taken the plunge and they are Attorney X alumni. To sign up is very simple. All you have to do is go to theunconventionalattorney.com forward slash attorney X. You can pick a date and time that work for you. And when that date and time come, we'll chat. Okay. So that's attorney or the unconventional attorney.com forward slash attorney X. Uh, go and schedule your date today so we can keep up this, this really cool uh, deal that we've got going on. All right. Now let's get into the show. Hello, friends, and welcome to another Attorney X episode. Unfortunately, I am a terrible host, and I forgot to hit the record button until about 25% of the way into this show. So, we don't have our traditional opening. We don't have our traditional opening questions. We just get right to the heart of it. So, let's get into the show. Now, I somewhat operate my own practice, but in a partnership, but we all have different practice areas. So it's kind of a hybrid office share partnership agreement, but I get to drive the ship. So. Okay, cool. Cool. What's um, when you, so I'm guessing when you sort of, I mean, got this, this opportunity, you probably didn't have to bring much money to the table or anything like that. Right. Cause you sort of were able to just sort of step into the work that was being done. Correct. It, I think the only uh, when I when I went out, I think I had two three grand that just went to buying a computer, paying some licensing fees and malpractice, and you know making sure I had enough clothes to wear to court four or five days a week, and that was pretty much it. Wow. Okay, that's cool. That's awesome. What um are you? All right, so. Do you uh, work at home? You have a traditional office. What's that situation like? I've got a traditional office. It's very, at least I work out of a very traditional office right on Main Street, right next to the courthouse. Uh, the benefit of that is tons of tons and tons of walk-in people get served with divorce. They leave the courthouse. Boom, we're right next door. So uh, there's some benefit in location. Yeah. Yep. Uh, do you bill by the hour or do you do flat fees? Hourly. All hourly all the time? Are you, are you, are you sticking to that forever? Uh, or I'm always interested about the people that bill by the hour, if you ever consider doing any, anything else. So I, I do by the hour on all family law cases. About two years ago, I experimented with a flat fee system and I got lots and lots of pushback from clients because no one else was doing it. And because no one else was doing it, I just could not get enough clients to, to bite. Yep. And then the, the couple people I did, somehow it communicated this message that my time was just unlimited. So they just, they burned me. And I, I swear I lost money on it, even though I had priced it out at, you know, just above the average cost of a case. Uh, I don't, I just think the lack of other people doing flat rates 
clients just saw it as a chance to burn me out. So I haven't tried it again. Again, I may later, but the time I transitioned, I either wasn't ready or it just did not work out locally. Got it. Got it. Interesting. Sometimes I think it's always worth an experiment, but obviously sometimes it just doesn't, doesn't, it's not the right fit for sure. What, um, yeah. How many, uh, let's see what, how many people are in your firm? Three attorneys and two staff. All right. What was your first in, in, did you sort of, were you guys all, did you guys all sort of absorb each other together? Did you guys all come in together? Like what was the, no, the, the other two were here as an established firm. Um, that previously had two other attorneys. So at this point now we have three, but previously there were as many as five here. And just over time that dwindled. So they were looking to inject some kind of some new life into it. You had a, a partner in his 60s and then a an associate in his late 30s. And so uh, kind of when I came aboard and brought everything over, we transitioned into a partnership. Got it. Got it. What, uh, what was your 2018 revenue? 2018 revenue was 198,000. Okay. Like that. Uh, give, give or take. Yep. Is that, is that you, what you brought in or is that the firm or is that, is that some sort of hybrid? That, that was me specifically. Nice. Okay. That's good. That's a good year. What, uh, how's 2019 looking, uh, growing at all doing well? 2019. 2019 is looking to be better. I figured out how to uh, kind of leverage my paralegal to do a lot of the stuff that I had been doing um, as far as communication, scheduling with clients. Uh, I kind of put together this list of typical questions that people always ask and thought only I could answer and kind of created a nice little flow chart for her. So if there's a question on the update, she could give him the date. If it was a question on something, she knew right where to find the answer. And it freed up so much time that I was just on the phone, on the phone, keeping cases going, answering the same question a bunch. So it freed up my time to take on more matters. And then I think we're looking at projected 250 for the end of the year in revenues. Awesome. Love it. What, uh, how many hours do you, so I've sort of modified this question as I've talked to people because, you know, kind of always thinking about the business works or doing stuff. How many, how many hours per week do you think you devote to just sort of like focused on business time? That could be going to court. That could be client matters, everything, but it's like where you're actually just work, you know, working. Does that make sense? Oh uh, yeah. So that's, I'd probably say about 30 hours a week is just pure straight work plus another 10 to 15 of administrative stuff that comes as part of directing the bookkeeper, directing other things that go on. And then uh, probably referral management is another five hours a week. So. Love it. Okay, cool. What, um, where do most of your clients come from? Online search. Yep. So they just look up divorce attorney, this place, and, and it comes right up. Um, and I've made sure that happy clients go to, uh, they leave Google reviews, they go to Avvo, they go to Martindale, whatever, just so not only when they see the Google review on the right hand side of the page, you know, it's got plenty of stars, good reviews, but as they look in the body of the search, uh, that stuff pops up too. So I try to make sure to spread it all around. Do you do any paid advertising at all? I don't. That's awesome. And so 250 with no paid is good for sure. What, um, what is your biggest challenge right now? Uh, the biggest challenge is, not being um, specific enough in my practice area. So I, I handle all the family law and then I also do the criminal defense and I also cover the personal injury um, when there's overflow. And so I find myself kind of churning time on work that I don't really like, but I'm just covering because there's a need. 
And I feel like if I could jettison those and have someone else on it, I could really be doing well. But I just, I don't transition well one practice area to another. So I know I'm just burning time doing that. Yep. Yep. What, uh, any sort of big goals over the next 12 months or 2020? I would say 2020. So my, my goal would be to collect on a higher percentage of work. I think I'm at about 70%. And so if I'm, you know, hitting, if I'm on track to hit 250 and I'm only collecting 60%, it means I'm leaving just tons of money on the table. And right. so managing that portion of, of my practice better, the financial aspect of it, because, you know, the work is the work. Every day is the same. You know, you always want to get a little bit better at your craft, but um, until I, you know, really figure out how to maximize the money I can bring in, it feels like I just, like I just own a job where it's not making me money unless I'm sitting here billing. So. Right. Do you have any, do you have any uh, solutions to, to, to reach that goal? To like improve that, that, that rate? Yeah. So the, so the kind of steps I, I plan for next year are clients know the upfront retainer before they walk in the door. So I don't run into a bunch of people that try to stiff me on payment. Once I start the case, um, getting credit cards. So uh, no one's getting behind on bills and then better use a lot, better utilizing um, assistance and delegating. So I'm not the one, you know, calling people to follow up on medical records or, or doing things that someone else can do more efficiently. Yeah. Love it. Love it. What, uh, all right. Last question. What is your best piece of advice for all those law firm owners out there that are listening to us sometime in the future? <laughs> Decide, I think deciding what, and I know you've talked about this before, deciding what you want your day and your life to look like. And if, if your office isn't congruent with that, then you've just got to change something. So if, if I'm saying I want to spend nights and weekends with my family and I want to do stuff and I want to go on vacation and I just schedule my brains out, what's the point? So figure out what you want. And if, if, you're, if your practice isn't giving that to you, something's got to change. Yep. Great advice. Great advice. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time and your transparency and welcome to the attorney X alumni association. Awesome. That's a wrap everybody. Thanks again for listening. I really appreciate your time and attention and a reminder. If you want to keep the attorney X series going, there's only one way to do that to get more of you on the show. To schedule a time to talk with me, talk about your firm anonymously, and get that free t-shirt, go to theunconventionalattorney.com forward slash attorney X. That's theunconventionalattorney.com forward slash attorney X. Can't wait to have you on the show. See ya.